Welcome to the second episode where I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Photoshop. Now in the last episode I showed you how to open up a new project inside Photoshop and what the different windows were inside the interface of Photoshop. And today I thought we we're going to go over the different tools that we have on the left side inside Photoshop because I did talk about it briefly in the last episode but we didn't really talk about each of the tools we have inside Photoshop that allow for us to do something to images that we want to manipulate inside the program. Now we're not going to do a really detailed walkthrough because that is going to bore you and you're not going to remember all I'm going to say. So I'm going to show you the basics of each of these tools and what we use the most commonly for inside Photoshop. So as you can see here, I do have a photo open inside Photoshop of a pancake store and we're going to use this photo in order to demonstrate the tools that we can use in order to manipulate the photo and make changes to it. So I'm just going to briefly go over each tool one by one and talk about the most common tools that we use over on the left side and sort of demonstrate them on this photo here. So first of all, before we can make any changes to anything inside Photoshop, like I mentioned in the previous episode, we need to make sure we unlock the picture that we dragged into Photoshop. So down here at the bottom on the right side inside the layers panel, I'm going to uncheck the lock icon we have on the layer that we want to do something to. So I'm just going to click it. So now we can make changes to it. Now the first tool we have up here at the top on the left side is the move tool and there is some shortcuts for each tool if you were to hover on the tool so you can actually see the shortcuts in this case it's going to be V there's a short pop up down here that uh, tells you what the shortcut is and with this tool whatever layer you have selected is going to be the one that you're going to work with so in this case I just have one layer and when I select the layer I can drag around the object inside that specific layer if I want to do that and that's what we do with the move tool over here on the left side. Now the second tool is going to be a selection tool we can use in order to select something inside the photo so if I want to select something in a square or a circle I can go ahead and choose the different ones if I hold down the mouse button and then go out to the side and select the shape that I want to use. So if I want to select something using a circle, I can go and use that one and just sort of drag and let go. And then we have a selection going inside uh, the picture. Now, what do we use this for? Well, if I want to do something specific only inside a certain selection, such as painting or doing something else with these tools we have down here. So if I were to say I want to paint something, I can go and choose the brush tool and I'm going to go ahead and choose a just a red color. Make sure I have the layer selected. And then when I paint, you can see I only paint inside the selection. So that's what we can use that specific tool for inside Photoshop. Now we do have some more uses for it. For example, if I want to make a selection like I did here, I can right click and I can go out and do something to the selection. I can feather the edges of it. I can transform the selection. I can fill it. I can create a stroke, meaning that we can create a border around the selection. There's a couple of different things we can do in here. I would also like to show you the shortcut we can use for when we want to make a selection using this tool, because if I were to drag, you can actually see that we're not making a complete circle. It's going to be sort of stretched a little bit. So if I were to hold down shift on my keyboard, you can see we now make a complete circle inside uh, the selection tool here. If I were to hold down Alt, you can see that instead of uh, making a circle from the corner of where I did actually start my circle and then dragging, we can then make a circle based off the center of where they actually click inside the artboard. So Shift is going to be to make a, a complete circle and Alt is going to be to uh, increase the size of it from the middle of the circle instead of the corner. Now the next tool we have over here is going to be another selection tool. In this case, we can actually go ahead and draw what we want to select inside Photoshop. So the default one here is going to be the lasso tool, which again shortcut is L, where you can go ahead and drag inside the artboard and select something based off what you choose with uh, using your mouse. And then it's just going to select something inside the photo. And again, it's the exact same thing. You can right click and then do something to it. And you can also use the paint tool in order to paint inside uh, only that specific, let's actually go ahead and choose the paint tool to only paint inside the selection here. And again, we just go ahead and go back to delete it. Now we do also have different options when it comes to uh, the lasso tool or the selection tool I just talked about. We can also select something based off the polygonal lasso tool, meaning that if we were to go inside the photo, instead of free drawing using the mouse, we click, then drag, and then click again to make a uh, a side of the selection and then I can keep doing that in order to choose something based off 
clicks instead of just dragging. So as you can see, and I made another selection here. We do have a third option called the magnetic lasso tool, which is also a great tool when you want to select something. It is going to take the colors inside your photo and then it's going to follow the line. So let's say I do have the side over here, you know, right next to the door. You can actually see that because it's, it can tell that there's a certain color over here of the wall and we have a white color here by the door. If it were to drag, it's going to follow that line to make sure I don't go out into one of the colors we have on the side here. So it's going to follow a line inside the photo, which is kind of a smart tool to work with. Now we do also have the selection tool below it that allow for us to either select something based off a color. So the one I just showed you with the lasso tool that selected based off two different colors and then the center of it. This one actually allows for you to select a complete color. So if I want to select only something that is orange, in this case, the wall over here, or you could say that's yellow, then I can go ahead and make a selection. And as you can see, it does select only that specific color over here in the selection. And you can change how sensitive it has to be over here by saying how hard it should be, uh, what the size of the brush should be. So you can make changes to that specific selection tool if it does select a little bit more than just that color you want it to select, you can you can change it here um, just to make sure it selects only that color you want to, to select. Now we do also have another option instead of the quick selection tool that I just showed you, we do have a magic wand tool that instead of holding and dragging when you want to select a specific color, it's going to select a color just by you clicking on that specific color. So if I want to select this black here, I just click. And as you can see, it selects the, the black that resembles the pixel that I clicked on when I had this tool here. As you can see, it didn't select everything. It does have a sort of a weird pattern going on here. And that's because the entirety of the picture I just clicked on or the pixel that I just clicked on that was black. There is some blackness here, some black pixels that are not the exact same black color. So it's going to make this weird selection where it didn't just, you know, select everything of the black up here. So what you can do is you can change the tolerance. Let's go and change it to one just to show you. If we were to click again, you can see that now we don't actually select anything because it's just going to select that specific pixel I clicked on because all the black pixels around it are not the same black color. So it's very sensitive here. Whereas in this case, I would have set it to 100. It's going to select a lot more black than before when I wanted to select a black color. So it's not going to be as... Um, it's not going to be as picky about which black color is going to choose. So you can mess around this number here in order to get the right selection that you want to choose when you want to select a certain color. Now let's just go ahead and deselect everything and go down to the next tool we have here. This is going to be the crop tool that allow for us to make changes to the picture. So let's say I want to not have this menu on the side here. If I want to cut off the part of the city that we see on the left side over here, I can take the crop tool, drag it over so you don't see the city then click apply. And now it just changed the complete um, dashboard or not the dashboard, but the artboard that we're working with inside Photoshop here. So now that left part of the picture is not going to be part of the picture anymore in this example here. Then the next tool we have below it here is going to be the eyedrop tool, which is going to allow for you to select a specific color. So let's say I want to select this white up here. Then you can see when I hold and drag that it does in fact select a color on the top of it. And if I were to select the white, you can see the color code combination either in the color panel that is behind my face cam. It does actually show the color selected. Or you can see it down here in the bottom left corner where you can actually get the color code of that specific color just selected in either the hex format or RGB or whatever you might want to get the color in. And you can see the color code for it. And you can also choose a color and then go down to the brush tool and then paint with that specific color if that's what you want to. So the eyedropper tool is a very basic tool for selecting a color. Now the next one here is something that is very used inside Photoshop. It is going to be the clone stamp cool, a clone stamp tool that allows you to copy a certain part of the image onto another part of the image. So to make sure I have the right layer selected, I can go in here. And I can go ahead and say, what if I don't want this specific uh, bench to this table here? I can actually go ahead. Let's actually go ahead and minimize this a little bit. Hold down Alt, then click on a spot on the photo, which means that now it's going to copy the circle here onto this part over here. And you can actually see that it does in fact uh, get that specific part 
uh, that I chose by you know looking at the little plus symbol. That's what it's actually copying right now. So as you can see now, I'm actually copying the disk over further to the left side. But if I want to, I can actually go ahead and completely remove the desk. And this is a better option than trying to select this specific color here and just paint over it because it looks sort of artificial. So I can just continue to copy and just sort of continue to erase what I what I have here that I want to remove. Now, as you can see, I do need to go back and forward in order to get it completely removed. That's because my flow that I have at the top here is not set to 100%. So if I were to set it very low, it is going to copy it a little bit. So I have to sort of drag back and forth a lot. And that is if you want to have subtle changes. Whereas if I were to set it to 100, you can see I just need to drag over it once. And then it sort of deletes what's, what is in there. Or it sort of copies uh, what is in there. So I can just go ahead and copy. And we can go up here to the window. Just sort of copy what we have here. And remove what is at the bottom. So as you can see, it's a very good tool to use in this example here. And just to finish off what I did here, to sort of prove my point, that we can remove this bench if we want to. There we go. And let's go ahead and copy from down here. Now I'm doing a really quick job here, just to sort of demonstrate. But I think I am getting the point across that you can use this tool in order to do some really awesome things uh, inside Photoshop. So there we go. and. Now there's no more bench. So this is a very good tool when you want to remove stuff inside Photoshop or make copies of a certain thing. So if I want another bench or another chair over here, I can just copy it and just you know sort of drag it down here. Now we have another chair. Again, you sort of get the point here. Now the next tool we have is going to sort of go together with the rest of the tools we have inside Photoshop. Because let's say I make a change to my photo here. Let's actually go ahead and copy the chair and say I want to put it right here. But as you can see, whoops, I just accidentally put part of the sign on here as well, but I didn't want it to be part of the photo, at least where I had the chair. I can go ahead and choose the history brush tool, that is the next tool. And when I draw, it is going to revert back to the previous state that I just came from. So if I were to draw on just the part of the sign, as you can see, it's going to just remove what I just made of changes using the clone stamp tool. Same thing goes with a brush tool. If I were to draw something, whoops, I can actually go and select it. Then I can revert back to the previous state. So this is a really nice tool known to redo something you just did inside Photoshop. Now the next tool we're going to talk about, and let's actually go back to the original photo we have here. Again, you can go inside the history tab that we have up here in the top and just revert back to a previous state if you wanted to. Um, we can go ahead and talk about the next tool. It's going to be the eraser tool. So if I want to delete something inside the photo, you might think, well, shouldn't we use the eraser tool? Well, if I were to try and delete the chair, as you can see, we do actually get this weird color going on inside the photo. And that's because right now, as you can see, we didn't actually unlock the layer on the side here. Again, because I reverted back to the first state where we just dragged the photo in. So meaning that I reverted back to before I did actually unlock the layer. If I were to unlock the layer again and then again erase you can actually see that now we do actually erase everything inside the photo so we don't have anything behind where we do actually erase now that was really not my point here my point was that if i want to delete something from the photo we're not going to use the eraser tool in order to do that the eraser tool is more for if you have a layer on top of the current layer like i just created here by saying new layer or Control shift n then you can go ahead when you draw draw something on the layer and you want to make changes to it. If we were to then use the eraser tool, you can now see that I only erased in that specific layer that I just created on top of my original picture, which is what the eraser tool is really useful when it comes to these sort of cases here. Now the next tool is going to be the filler or the paint bucket tool that you can use if I were to create a new layer. Again, I just used the shortcut instead of clicking down here at the bottom, Control Shift N or Command Shift N if you're on Mac. And if I were to create a new layer, and say I wanted this layer to be a certain color, then I can go down into the color panel down here at the bottom of the toolbar and select, let's say, a red color. And then if I were to click on the layer, you can now see that it's going to fill in the entire layer with that specific red color. So if I were to again use the eraser tool by going back and just erase, you can now see that we are only erasing on that specific layer that it just filled up with the paint bucket tool. Again, if you also have the original photo and you wanted to make a certain selection. So let's actually take the uh, uh, circle selection tool that I talked about before, make a circle, use the uh, fill tool, 
and do that, you can now see that we filled in the part that I just uh, highlighted with the circle tool. So again, this is just a basic fill tool that you also have in Paint that you get with Microsoft when you get a computer. So it's not really that complicated. We do also have, if you were to hold down the mouse button on this tool, a gradient tool. Now, if I were to go and create a new layer, just for the heck of it, and go up here to the top, where you can see we have this little a selection here that says what kind of gradient you're going to use. I can click on it and now I can choose different gradients that you want to use inside your uh, photo. So let's take the white and black one here. I can actually go ahead and add to it if I wanted to and add another color. I can change it by double clicking on it and choosing another color. So let's actually choose a blue. And you can also do that to the end colors here if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and say white. Actually, no, let's go ahead and choose a reddish color. So red, blue, white. Say OK. I can then drag and then create a gradient based on what I just selected here. So as you can see, we can keep changing it if you want to. Now, right now it's set to a circular selection or gradient or what they call a radiant gradient, as it says here. Uh, I can also choose a regular gradient that you might be more used to, where we can go ahead and you know create a more uh, linear gradient, if you, you could call it that. So we have some different options here up in the top. Uh, if I want to make some different gradient styles, like so. So again, let's go ahead and revert it back. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the layer this time. And now let's talk about the one called the blur tool that we have below the gradient tool. Now in here, if I were to hold it down, you can see we have three different tools to choose from. The blur tool will allow for us to take part of the photo. And if I were to just make a higher selection, we can actually go ahead and blur something inside the photo. So if we were to do this and hold down and just keep dragging, dragging, dragging. I don't know if you can tell, but it is actually blurring out slightly. If we were to go back, you can actually see that we do have a slight difference in blur. And again, you can increase the strength up here or decrease it depending on what you want to do. We do also have one called the sharpen tool that does the opposite. If you want something to be sharp, well, let's say you have a photo where something is blurry. And again, this is a good tool for if something is slightly blurry. If you have something that's very blurry, you shouldn't be using this tool. Uh, you should take a new photo because it's not that good that it can completely unblurry a photo that is completely blurred. Um, so let's actually go and see what this one does. If I were to go over here to the sign and just use it, it makes slight differences to the sign. And it's just going to load a little bit here because I did a lot of sharpening. If I were to go ahead and remove it back and forth so you can see what we just did and again it's still thinking because it is quite a powerful tool that does need a little bit of thinking inside photoshop if i were to go ahead and go back to before you can see that i did sharpen the sign that we have here quite a bit um, and again if you do too much you get sort of these uh, noise effect going on where you get some dots that shouldn't be there if we were to zoom in you can actually see it uh, as you can see, we get a lot of dots going on on the sign. If we were to go back, you can see it's more faded out, which is, you could argue, is, is one better than the other? I don't know. Depends on you uh, when you create the photo. The next tool we have is something called the Smudge tool. If I were to use this one, let's say under uh, here, you can see we're smudging it out. It's sort of the same as licking your thing, uh, finger. And then if you have a painting and you sort of smudge it out using a wet finger, that's sort of what we're doing here. Uh, so you can use that one as well. Now, the one below here is another tool that I use quite often. If you have something that is too dark or too bright on a photo, you can use this tool in order to sort of brighten it up or darken it down. So if I want something to be slightly brighter, let's go and use this tree for example, I can go and use the one called the dots tool and I can increase the exposure up here if I want it to be more powerful or less powerful. Let's go ahead and go with 100% for now just to sort of to sort of exaggerate a little bit of what I talk about, I can go ahead and go to this tree. And as you can see, I create some brightness to it. And this is a really nice tool if you want to get some details out in, for example, the bright colors on a specific object. So now I do actually think it looks quite a bit better, if I had to say so. As you can see, if we go back, it's just plain, boring, and dark. And now I just created some highlights on the picture here. We can do the opposite. If we were to choose the burn tool, uh, we sort of burn it out and decrease the brightness on the areas that we want to select. So now we can actually make it even darker, make it fade into the background because we don't really want to see the tree. So we can do quite a bit with these tools here. There's the last tool called the sponge tool. Now imagine you have a painting and you want to 
you, you painted some colors on it and you want to remove some of it because you painted too much color. You want it to fade out a little bit more. You can use the sponge tool sort of as a wet sponge that you sort of, sort of, you know, just tap on the painting to get the color off. It does the same thing here. So if I were to go up to this light here, you can see I'm removing the color uh, using the sponge tool. So that's what we're doing here. So having talked about all of these, let's actually go ahead and go back to a previous state. We also have something called a pen tool. Now the pen tool is my preferred tool for when you want to select something specific. Now we did talk about using the lasso tool and the polygonal tool and the magnetic tool uh, for selecting stuff. Like if I wanted to select something here, I could do that. Now the pen tool I do think is a lot better for selecting elements. If I wanted to select something like this window here, I can click and then go down and then click again in order to create a line where you can select around the element. Now you might be thinking, what is the difference between using the pen tool and the second option inside the lasso tool where we just sort of, you know, clicked around in order to select something? Well, the difference here is that the pen tool is, let's actually go ahead and go back here. The pen tool allows for us to go around round edges if we need to. So if we want to go around and round edge, we can hold and drag. And as you can see, we now get this little uh, dragging icon here. Let's actually go ahead and zoom in so you can actually see. We can create curves, which is a lot better. So if we were to select something, just go ahead and select something really quick. You can see that right now we don't really have anything selected. Well, we do have something selected, but usually in Photoshop, when you select something, we get this, you know, ant line that goes around what we selected that sort of moves around. As you can see, it's sort of animated. That means you selected something. And if I were to draw using the paintbrush, you can see I only draw inside the selection. But when it comes to using the pen tool, we're not really selecting anything. We do have a selection, but we're not really selecting anything. So what we need to do here is we can use the pen tool for a lot of different things. We can make outlines, we can make uh, fills and that sort of thing, just like we can with the other one. If I want to make a selection, I can take the pen tool, right click on what I just made using the pen tool, and then I can go ahead and create a selection by saying make selection. And now we can also feather it if we want to, if I want to make the lines on the, on the outside not as hard, but if I want to make it sort of fade in with the, the outside of the selection, we can go ahead and feather it a little bit. But if we were to click OK, you can now see we have a selection going. Now, while we're talking about the pen tool, I do want to talk about another tool that is very closely related or has something to do with the pen tool inside our toolbar here. So if we were to make a selection again, just make something square. And then I'm going to choose this one down here called the path selection tool. Now, if I have a path created using the pen tool, I can use this one in order to move it around if I want to make changes to it. I can also, if I want to make changes to just one of the points I made using the pen tool, which is one of the corners here, I am not going to use this tool because as you can see, it's just going to drag it around again. Instead, I'm going to hold it down on the path selection tool and choose the direct selection tool that allow for me to select just a corner if that's what I want to change inside this specific selection here. So we can do that if you want to. So having talked about the pen tool and the selection tool here, let's actually go ahead and go back to a previous state. Again, I love to do that. And let's talk about the text tool. The text tool you're going to use a lot in Photoshop. So if we were to choose it, I can click and then I can type something. And as you can see, we get some text going. We can change the text up here if I want to have a different font, if I want to have a different stroke type or what you call a uh, weight to the font. I can change the font size. I can change different aspects of it. Do I want it centered? Do I want it going to the left or the right side? The color of it, so I want to make it white. I can do that as well. There's a lot of different things we can do up here. And when you make any kind of changes, you need to make sure you click OK with the check mark icon in order to make the changes. Now you can also go ahead instead of just clicking and then typing something, you can also make a selection using the text tool because if you want to type a lot, then it's nice to be able to just sort of highlight a space that you want to be able to type on. So it will automatically go down to the next line because if I didn't do this, and let's actually go ahead and go back. And if I were to just click it and type something, it's just going to continue into infinite, 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 infinity. It's called infinity unless I do click the enter key on my keyboard, 
manually each time I want to go down to the next line. So that is a nice thing to do inside the text tool if you want to have a certain area that you want to type something in. Now we don't have a lot of tools left, so just really briefly, we do also have a rectangle tool, which we can also change into a rounded rectangle or a ellipse tool or polygon tool. Basically, we're just making a selection that is going to be filled in using a color that we can make changes to over here on the right side. So it's going to pop up with these options you can make changes to. This is to, uh, for making basic shapes, so that is a tool for that. We do also have the hand tool which is going to do the exact same thing as the shortcut I talked about in the previous episode, where if you're zoomed in, you can drag around the photo as a shortcut instead of going up and down on the right and the, and the bottom here if you want to move around the artboard. Again, the shortcut is clicking space. So if I'm using another tool and I click space, hold it down, I can then use the same tool in order to move around the artboard, which is a lot nicer than, again, having to click over here, choose the hand, uh, hand tool and then moving around and then going back to the tool you were just using, do that instead. Then we also have a tool for zooming in and out. So if I want to zoom in on a certain spot inside the photo, I can choose it and then just click on the part of the photo I want to zoom in on. If I want to zoom out again, I just hold down Alt and then you can see we zoom out again. And again, you could also just say Control plus or Control minus if you wanted to. That is a shortcut on the keyboard. A lot easier than having to choose this tool each time. So these are some of the tools we have on the left side here. And that is what I want to talk about in this episode. This might be quite a long episode. I hope it's not going to be too long. Um, but these tools are quite important to know about. And like I said, I just talked about the basics of some of the most commonly used tools inside the sidebar here. And it was more of a sort of to show you what you could do inside Photoshop using these tools. Um, I don't expect you to remember all of it. We will, when we start creating some small projects, learn how to use these tools again. So don't worry about it if you don't remember everything about each tool. I don't remember everything about each tool by now. And it's something I use Photoshop all the time. So don't sweat it if you don't remember everything. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode.